A major change is coming for entertainment companies as they are now faced with a huge switch in the way that they market everything. Folks, this is a big one. Today, we're telling you how the Google antitrust lawsuit is having entertainment companies run for cover. And it heavily features a complete paradigm shift to artificial intelligence. What in the world are we talking about? Well, a video that we promise you should not miss. Hello folks and welcome back to the channel that rarely misses with the content we cover because we cover it truthfully. Entertainment, that is our forte right here, as well as sometimes all the news that should be fun. Travel, tourism, you get the idea. Today we are talking about artificial intelligence because it seems to be changing the way that entertainment corporations are going to try to control what you see in regards to their products. Movies, streaming, games, you get the idea. But folks, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is a huge topic with major ramifications and almost nobody is yet connecting the dots. That's where we come in. Folks, join us as we talk about a huge shift in entertainment. Let's bring the panel on right now. Of course, all kinds of news could be breaking. I want to go to this, though, because it has a huge impact on entertainment and beyond. And that is uh, this uh, Google court decision. And this is out of National Review. It says AI could make the Google court decision moot. This is so important. It's not the typical uh, conversation you might expect to hear on the pro show, but it's vastly important. And I can't let you all not know about it. This is by Ian Murray. And it says, in a decision by the District Court of the U.S. Uh, of Columbia, Google has been found guilty of monopolizing its leadership in online search by its exclusive deals with browser providers. The de uh, these deals, the court says, entrenched a position it had won by being the best search engine, keeping competitors from being able to challenge its position. Uh, this is very, by the way, Microsoft versus Netscape-esque, but you'd have to go back 20 years to know about that. The court has not yet announced any remedies and is unlikely to until Google has exhausted its appeals. The court will be unable to take the EU remedy of requiring a choice screen on devices as the makers of the devices are not a party to the lawsuit in question. It may be that the court bans Google from bidding for that uh, for the position of default search engine, which would surely benefit Microsoft the most while hurting the device manufacturers. All right, now here's what's interesting to me. The whole question could be moot. Early adopters already are moving away from Google as, the, as their default search engine. Julian Simon, award-winning uh, Balaji Srinivasan, recently showed his 1 million followers on X how to change their search engines to Perplexity AI on Google's own browser, Chrome. In about 30 seconds, AI-based search engines are almost certainly the future, and Google is famous for having botched its AI rollout. Goes on to talk about ChatGPT. Now, here's what I want to talk about, guys. For the past 20 years, entertainment companies have managed to decide what it is you're going to hear about their properties, and they've not liked it very much when you get anything outside of the approved narrative. So if you thought The Last Jedi was no good, then you're a Russian bot on Rotten Tomatoes and we've got to fix the system so you can't be heard. If you decided that the 2016 Ghostbusters was a bust at the box office, well, you're a troll and we've got to find a way for you not to be heard. And that's continued on. Really, though, Elon Musk's purchase of X, along with the lessening of, uh, what would you say, parameters on YouTube, has allowed people to talk about these things. The paradigm shift that's happening here is that Entertainment companies managed this essentially because Google has been able to rank order the voices that you're allowed to hear. Now, with AI coming on, entertainment companies are racing to make sure that they are the ones that the AI will refer to in grand ways. What am I talking about? Well, on, on ChatGPT right now, if you install that app, ChatGPT, on your phone, on the bottom right side of the screen, there's a little microphone button or a little uh, headphone button. And if you click that, your phone will become essentially a little, what would you say here? It would become a, uh, oh, what's the, what's the what's the AI test, guys? What's the name of it? Turing? Or, yes, the Turing test. It becomes a little Turing test on your phone. And you can talk to it and have a conversation with it in life, just like a human. Well, that is what many of these companies presume to be the future of, of search engines. You won't go to Google. You won't go to... Chrome. You won't go to uh, uh, to DuckDuckGo. Instead, you're just going to talk to your phone and it's going to tell you the answers. 
And you're going to say to your phone, uh, you know, hey, phone, when's the next movie coming up that I want to go see? And it'll just pop it up that easy. And it'll have a conversation with you. The race right now is to make sure that these AI devices are willing to uh, willing to promote these movies and shows and the preferred narrative in the same way that Google has in the past. And Google now is finding itself in the past with the search feature right at the same time that the U.S. government decides, oh, well, this was a monopoly anyway. Guys, your thoughts on the on, on the race to get in control of AI and how it will perceive you and then relay that to customers? It, it's about whether that AI is tied to Google or DuckDuckGo or who. It's not, it's not, it hasn't got the volume of the, uh, the searchable stuff that Google has, or will it? I don't know. I mean, I run into this lately. Uh, I switched because I got sick of uh, uh, Google and, and their browser. And now my default search is DuckDuckGo, which is fine for just searching. But when I'm looking at a website and I want to look at, uh, well, let me look up that address. I get some other map than Google Maps, and it doesn't have the Google Street View, and it doesn't have as flexible a, a searchable around the area, what's around the corner over there, visual representation. So I wind up having to go open Google Maps and put that address in separately, which is a pain, frankly. So it's, it's not just Google. It's all the stuff it brings with it. And will these AI programs just tie into that some kind of way, as opposed to creating their own infrastructure? I don't know. Well, let me let me do a quick uh, display of what I'm talking about for people to understand why there's now a battle for control of this. And remember, the internet largely has been controlled, at least for the normies, by the corporations, because when you search for something, they want all the positive stories to be at the top. And so that, right. by the way, has played into the culture war dramatically. Let's try this now. Okay, so I have ChatGPT, the app installed on my phone, and we're going we're gonna to try this out and see if this works. I'm going to ask this a question, and, and you all will get to hear what it says back, and you'll understand, I hope, why this matters to the corporations. You ready? Here we go. We're connecting right now. Which do you think will be a bigger franchise in the future, Marvel or DC? It's thinking. Predicting whether Marvel or DC will be the bigger franchise in the future depends on several factors, including <laughs> storytelling quality, cinematic and TV production, and audience engagement. Marvel has had a strong run with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, MCU, creating a cohesive storyline across many films. And TV. Okay, so you get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. Now, well, let me say this make, first. Make it's that be more the well, Lou, as you get started. Lou, as you get started, though, I want to say, though, that's funny. Let me say this. What about if you're asking it which movie you should go see that night? Ah. That's This is where it's going. And you may say, well, today it's not that impressive. Well, what about a year from now? Mm -hmm. And what about when people just pull out their phone and say to it, you know, which movie should I go see tonight? Or well, wait a minute, I'm trying wait to decide between this streamer and this streamer. Which one should I get? Has that's it, the fun. Has it been tracking my previous choices? To know my taste, that's the question. Well, let's, let's try this through through uh, being tied into Fandango, where I last bought a ticket, or whatever it happens to be. If that's the case, then it's going to draw some conclusions. And who's giving it the instructions on how to draw those? Right. And so let's let's ask it a question now that I saw in the chat that I think is great. Here we go. Ready? Why did the Marvels fail at the box office? <laughs> thinking sexism dave <laughs> the marvels struggled at the box office for several reasons one key factor was the growing sense of superhero and sequel fatigue among audiences official narrative uh. led decreased enthusiasm for new releases in the genre the film's characters including monica rambo and miss marvel were less familiar or less popular compared to other marvel heroes which mm. likely contributed to lower interest moreover over the absence of promotional efforts by the cast due to the SAG after strike official limited the movie narrative its visibility and excitement leading up to its release. Well, at least okay. they won't be replacing us. <laughs> not yet, not yet, and we hope never. Uh, but that's that's what the battle is now, folks. And we want this to be something that's on your radar. Okay, I know everybody has different opinions about AI. Some of you have strong opinions. You may be right, others may be wrong. But I want this to be on your radar that for entertainment corporations. The battle is on. 
because the battle is now no longer about maintaining the rank order of where Google sees you. That's, that's out. Now the battle is we have to be preferred by as many AI platforms as we possibly can be so that when customers ask, should I go see this or should I go do this or why is Disney so expensive? They want the most optimal positive answer possible that puts them in the best light to make money. That is where the battle will be. This is a dangerous game. This is a slippery slope. I do not like where this is going. Yeah. This, this is this is, this this is, is more way, Yeah, it's more ways, Lou, for them to just indoctrinate you and indoctrinate your but, kids because kids are going to be asking this thing questions. Yeah, that's a good. But that's good point. the point. It's the same game in a different format. It, yes. Overall, look at look at what happened when the when the regular old news started getting so biased. What it said was, it isn't a question of do I watch MSNBC or do I watch Fox. It's a question of a pox on all their houses because they're all a bunch of liars. It will reduce <laughs> credibility for any of these ways of reaching you, especially when, as you just heard, all it does is recycle what's out there anyway. Tell me the practical dis dif dis difference other than the convenience of having it tell you those things we've read 100 times or reading those things we've read 100 times. I'll, I'll also I, think, point out I think it's a big deal because the technology is new. But the content is the same old game. You, you know, the, the content, but the control is different because the control is shifting to new companies, new paradigms. Maybe, Jonas? Maybe. There, there are two things I want to point out here. Um, as far as alternate options, the same name, different game. Uh, same game, different name, sorry. Uh, with with DuckDuckGo, I'm pretty sure that is powered by Bing, which is uh, Microsoft-owned. Uh, at this point, there might yes. be some uh, tweaks to that. So, you know, it's 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 still back in that Google Microsoft uh, fight. Also, perplexity AI that is recommended here in this article. I'm not recommending it because I don't know anything about it. Um, it not, neither am I, by the way. Right. It, but it, it goes to a wonderful quote from Arthur Weasley, which I don't know if it made it into the Harry Potter movies, but it's definitely <laughs> in the books. Uh, you shouldn't trust anything that you don't know where its brain is located. Well, that's that's going to be tough because the future is going to have neural networks that I don't consider to be, to be brains. And by the way, there's a deep conversation to be had. And I'm looking forward still to having this conversation with uh, with a particular guest now that I've talked to in real life. He uh, He's not going to be the one that you all think of that we're going to have this conversation. But I think he is uh, particularly interested in it. But I, I'm looking forward to talking about the difference in the way AI neural uh, networks work versus the brain and how it's fundamentally different and why we need to understand this in the context of entertainment. I mean, it's, it's going to be fascinating. We'll get there. But uh, for right now, folks, we need to go to. Uh, oh, wait, wait, the, wait. The, uh, I want to quote there. somebody. You quoted Ron Weasley. Let me quote somebody. What are we going to do tonight, brain? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. <laughs> Try to take over the world. <laughs> well, I think that I think we should just make our own AI. It should just be Jonas, but the O is a zero, and it's got Jonas's voice. It's like Jarvis, but it's Jonas. Oh, I love it. Uh, Perfect. I have no comment on this uh, uh, particular uh, aspect of my, per I mean, uh, personality. <laughs> It'll pass the Turing test simply by having us and ums in it. And folks, we have done it again. Magic is in the air. We must leave you there. All right. As we go, we only ask one small favor. Go from being a passive observer to what we have said to an active engager of the content. Click the like button, share, subscribe. Click it, stick it to the algorithms. It is the notification bell. Drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts for a mind is a terrible thing to waste. So waste not yours. And share with us, what do you think about this very deep and very intriguing conversation we've just had? Not the typical kind of thing you see on this channel, although we know we have the highest IQ audience on the internet. Folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun.